Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to see you guys. Good to be back. Um, thank you. I'm glad one person is happy that we're back. Two. Can I get a three? Can I get a four? Can I get a five? Hey, man, I'm glad I'm back, too. Miss you guys. Love you guys. Uh, drove a little over 6,500 6, miles and uh, saw a lot of things we wanted to see, saw things I didn't want to see, and uh, uh, just had a great time, man. Um, just had a good time with my family and, my, and uh, such a blessing to be with them and, and um, long car rides and lots of laughs, lots of fighting in the back seat over stupid stuff, but I won't mention names, but just had a good time. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun, and, and thank you. I had a few of you uh, text me and, and just encourage me, and, and uh, that really blessed me, and, and um, you know, praise the Lord. You know, I, I just can't get away from this. Um, uh, 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 Sister Pat, not, not Grandma Pat, but uh, Sister Pat. Yes, where's she at? She was in the back. Oh, okay. She, she, uh, she okay, I'll, 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 I'll give that to her when she gets back in here. She stepped out for a minute, but there, you know, I, there was just some stuff that was sent to me while I was on, um, on the road and so by some of you guys, and I just want to thank you personally because it really blessed me. Just some of you mentioning to me uh, that you are praying for us and all that kind of stuff. We felt the hand of the Lord on us being back there. I was able to minister at uh, Tony and Pastor Tony and Sister Mary uh, Kroger's Church in Sedalia, Missouri, uh, two Sundays ago. And we had a great time, man, um, several healings. Uh, just a real strong um, move of the Spirit as far as words of knowledge. I mean, just one after another, just boom, 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 boom. And a lot of people really got touched. There was a, uh, I, I had gotten a word of knowledge on the way to the meeting that day of, of pan- pancreatitis. I believe that's how you say it. And, um, and so I gave that word out, and there was a man that stood up. <clears throat> and he came up to get prayed for. And, and he said that uh, uh, he was diagnosed about 15 years ago with it, and he said the doctor told him that it was just going to get worse and never leave. And he was on all kinds of medication. He was taking, he's been taking medication and all that. And, uh, and I, I prayed for him, and he went down under the power, and I kind of moved on and was praying for other people and came back about 10 minutes later to him, and he was on the ground, and he, he was on the ground. I kind of just looked at him, and when I looked at him, he kind of went like this to me. So I got down because I couldn't hear what he was saying. I got down low to him, and he said... Um, he said, I can't get up. <laughs> and I said, well, like, I mean, like, are you, is it like, like a bad, like I can't get up? Like something's really wrong with you or is it the power of God? He said, no, it's the power of God. He said, I tried to get up, but he said, I heard Jesus talk to me. And I said, oh yeah, what did he say? And he said, he said to me, you can either get up and not get healed or you can get healed and stay down. <laughs> and I said, well, then you better stay down like that. And he said, yeah, I have. And he said, ever since, and this is what he told me, he said, ever since when, when the Lord said that to me and I decided that I'm going to stay down, he said, I have not been able to feel, um, I've, all I've felt is tingling from my neck down in my body. I can't feel my legs. I, I just feel tingling in my body. And I said, it's happening right now. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, just stay down, stay there. And I said, the Lord's doing something with you, sir. And about 20 minutes later or so, I kind of looked over and I saw him stand up with some help from some of the ushers. And uh, he came over to me and he said, I just, I, I feel different. I really feel like there's just a pressure that was in my abdomen area that's gone. And I just feel really light and I feel really better. And you could see it on his, on his countenance, just the, the refreshing. Uh, really what it was is he was, I was just seeing the kingdom of heaven on his face, really is what it was. I mean, he, he was touched by the Father. And uh, so we just had some really good things happen. And I really sensed your prayers and some they were praying for us, and, and I just want to thank you for that, and thank you for allowing us to get away and just uh, spend some quality time together as a family and have a good time. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you so much for today. Thank you for my church family. Thank you for the love that they have for me and my family, and Lord, I love them, Lord, and, and I, just, I just thank you that we've gathered together as a community here today, Lord, to worship, to praise you. You're in this place, Jesus. You want to do good things, and it's not by just one particular person, Lord, but there's all of us in this place together in unity. You want to use all of us, Lord. And so, Father, if you're speaking to somebody sitting in their chair today that you want them to speak something maybe over someone in here, Lord, as they sit there, Lord, just let us work together in unity today, Father. Because the Bible says that where there's unity, there's power. Where there's unity, there's corporate, where, there, where there's corporate anointing, there's power. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the dunamis power of the Lord in this place today in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. 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 Turn me over to Romans chapter 12. Um, you know, we, uh, Dad was talking earlier about the glory of God, and he was talking about uh, you know, uh, God wanting to use us to demonstrate His glory, not only in Madeira, but wherever we're at on the road. You know, I had a chance to demonstrate the glory of God in Memphis, Tennessee, when I was there in front of a gas station, and uh, that was pretty fun. That was pretty cool. I didn't even ask the guy if I could pray for him. He asked me if I could pray for him. And he had no idea who I was or anything about me. He didn't even, I didn't even, I said a few words to him before he asked me, can you pray for me? <laughs> I was like, cool, yeah, I was just getting ready to ask you if I could do that. And, uh, you know, so, so we carry the glory. We are Isaiah 61. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Gross darkness will cover the earth, but the Gentile will see the glory, will see the light, will see Jesus on you. And the only way that works for you is if you believe that. The only way that works for you is if you make that a lifestyle. We can, we have, we can, we can, I mean, we can create all kinds of lifestyles. You look, you look at your past maybe and think about your life and some of the lifestyles you created, some of the habits you got into, uh, some of the just deals that you dealt with or, or walked in or whatever. We can create all kinds of lifestyles for us if we allow ourselves to. But God wants us to create His glory lifestyle. A lifestyle, and, and here's another big thing. You want to really have the mega glory flowing through you? Create a love lifestyle. Create a compassion lifestyle. Stop your mind when you look at someone and you want to condemn them or judge them because of how they're acting and start to look at them out of compassion the way Jesus sees them. It might be true. They might be, listen, it was true. I acted like a moron quite a bit growing up. And it, might, it was true. And I know people saw it. And there was decisions I made that were bad. They were not good. And then there was fruit that was coming from those decisions I made and things like that. But the thing is, is, is I had people in my life that looked on me with compassion and love. And that's what healed me and helped me. That's what pulled me out of a lot of that stuff. Just being honest with you. So be that person that wants to flow in the mega glory. I don't know where that came from, but it came good. It sounds good. The mega glory and walk in compassion and walk in love. That's a big thing. You know, walking into that gas station that day, I was just walking in to put gas in the car. I was across the street just a thrown stove from Elvis to Pelvis' house when I was putting gas in my car, you know. Thank you very much. We visited Graceland. Pretty wild, pretty cool. Elvis the pelvis. Anyways, all right. <clears throat> but I don't want to get into Elvis, hey man. But I was just walking in that gas station, and but but I was but but I was just the love of the Lord's in us. I wasn't at church. I wasn't really even necessarily praying in the Holy Ghost. Nothing like that. I was just Mike Purcell had to shave for a few days and was wearing workout shorts and a t-shirt and sandals, and walked in to get gas. You know, and, 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 and I walked out and I saw this guy sitting on the, on the sidewalk, you know, just leaning up against the, 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 the uh, building there. And, and he looked, didn't look homeless, really. He didn't look nothing. It looked like he might have been drinking a little bit. And uh, I just kind of, I, I kind of saw him when I was walking in and, and, I, and I heard him say, hey, brother, like that. And I looked at him. I go, hey, what's up, man? He goes, uh, if you could, could buy me some fish in there. I said, fish? And I was giving him heart. I go, you don't want to eat fish from a Shell gas station, man. You got to eat fish at the ocean. He goes, yeah, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to, to cook them and all that kind of stuff. And I said, I said, oh, and I kind of just laugh. But when I got in there, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, buy that guy something. A lot of times I don't do that, you know. But I heard the Holy Spirit say that to me. So they had some food in there that was cooked, you know. So I, I bought him some food and I came out. And I walked to him, and I go, here, man, God bless you, or whatever like that. And he goes, uh, he goes, um, he goes, oh, man, man, you didn't have to do that. And I said, you just asked me to do that. And I was giving him a hard time. You know, he's laughing. We were laughing. And he says, uh, he says, man, this really, this really just, this really just, this, man, this makes me feel good, he said. And I said, well, that's good, man. I hope so, you know, whatever. And, and he says, uh, he says, uh, what are you doing? Or what are you up to or something like that? And I said, well, I said, I'm just filling my car up because I'm getting ready to drive back to California tomorrow. And he goes, California? Man, that's a long ways, like that. And I said, it is a long ways. Trust me. I've driven all the way out here, you know. And we were kind of, I was kind of cracking jokes with him. We were laughing. And, um, and he says, uh, he says, uh, 
He says, well, before you go, man, can you pray for me? And I hadn't mentioned anything about, you know, me being a Christian, nothing. I didn't say anything about that. But see, people see it, guys, on all of us. They see it. Because that's what, I mean, I'm just being honest with you, and I know a lot of you are like this too, but a lot of our prayers probably are, Lord, let people see you in us. I pray that, and I ask the Lord for that. Without me even having to say a word about it, I just want people to see the genuine love, you know, of the Father. And I said, you know what? I said, uh, I, said I was going to ask you that anyway, so let me just pray for you now, man. He says, okay. So I just started to pray for him. I just started blessing him. Speaking blessing over him, his family. I didn't know his situation, didn't know what was going on. I don't even know the I didn't even know the I don't even remember the guy's name. I don't even know if I asked him his name. I don't know. But just just prayed, prayed for him. And I just felt the anointing, the peace of God come as I was standing there praying for this man, you know? And I got done praying for him and I kind of opened my eyes and I looked and there was another man standing right here, right next to me. It kind of startled me for a second because I didn't know. I had my back to the to the the parking lot and I was praying for him. And uh I said, Oh, and he said, Hey man. He was, he was, I don't know, he was probably in his 60s or 70s or so, this man. He said, hey, uh, he said, I was getting gas over there, and I just want to come over and thank you, brother, for praying for this man. <laughs> so I don't know if he knew the guy maybe, because it's kind of a small area there, you know, maybe it's like a little community kind of that area, you know, where people live and stuff. So maybe he knew, knew him from the neighborhood or something like that. I don't know. But he said, I just want to thank you for praying for that man. He goes, you didn't have to do that, man, but I can see love on you. Thank you for praying for him, brother. That's what he said to me. I don't know, maybe he was an angel, I'm, I don't know, but, but um, that really blessed me, you know, and I must have been praying pretty loud, because I did see that man pumping gas, but he was a ways away, he doing anything loud, no, but, but that's, you know, I, I must have been, you know, but, but the whole thing about that is, you know, we... And I know this happens to a lot of you guys. I know a lot of you guys go out and you look for stuff like this because it's a good way to do it. But see, having love and compassion will bring all the ingredients that God has for your destiny and for uh, you not only as an individual in the body of Christ, but also uh, to play your part in this big body of Christ that there is out there where all of our supply can be put together and the kingdom's accomplished. You know, and what I was going to say, Sister Pat, about you, I, I just, I really feel like, you know, I've been learning a little bit about our heritage and, and um, not only just our natural heritage of people, where you come from and things like that, but also our spiritual heritage, you know, and when I said that to you earlier about when you texted me, that when, you, when I was on the road and, and that ministered to me, you know, uh, she, Sister Pat texted me when I was on the road and it was just a real encouraging word for me that really blessed me. It was like I needed it right at that moment. Because I was thinking about some stuff, and I needed it right at that moment. And I realized that when she texted me, I was in Oklahoma at a rest stop. And when I saw that, it dawned on me by the Spirit of God. It wasn't me thinking this, but when I saw it, I went, you know what? She's, they're from Oklahoma. And there was something about it, and I don't understand all that. Maybe you need to pray into that a little bit and ask the Lord what that was. Because Dad's been talking to me a lot about heritage and how God wants to take us back and line us up with our heritage that God has set us, uh, that God put us in our spiritual heritage. There might be something the Lord might want to show you concerning your heritage and where your roots are from, where you're from, your family, where they came out, your dad, your mom, where they were you know, born there in Oklahoma or whatever, where they came from. And you, you were born in Oklahoma too, right? No, you weren't. You were born out here, but they, they are. So I don't know. Maybe ask the Lord if there's something about that. That just kept coming back to me uh, this morning. So anyways, that was a little side journey. But see... Dad was talking about the glory earlier in the service, and um, he wants us, the Father wants us to display that glory. Listen, church, this church here, this congregation here, this ministry here is no longer just let's go to church on Sunday so we can earn brownie points with God and be a good Christian, and yay, we're good, we went to church, okay, that's what it's about, okay? I don't even know if it's really ever even been about that here, but I'm just saying that, look, our religious mindsets have got to be changed. My religious mindset has got to be changed. There's things God's dealing with me about that's religious. I didn't think I had any religion in me, and God started showing me some stuff, and I'm going, ah! really? Okay, God, break it off. It could be a mindset of intimidation. 
You're afraid that if you lift your hands or if you dance and shout a little bit, that you're going to get made fun of or something like that. Folks, don't worry about it. Just obey the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't ever get nothing out of church. Well, you never get in. That's why. I sure wish I could dive in my pool when I get home and get wet. Everybody else is in there, and I'm standing here at 105 sweating. And then just get in. And be off. I heard Ed Dufresne say that one time. A lot of people, well, I didn't get nothing out of that service. See, look, a lot of times the Holy Ghost will move a certain way, and whoever wants to get in can get in that way. Just go along with him. If he's moving in joy, laugh. <laughs> Why not? What's the, the, you can't hurt anything. Sometimes you don't feel like it. I get it. Your flesh will never feel like getting in the glory. Your flesh will never feel like worshiping God. Your flesh will never want to pray. Your flesh never wants to bless somebody. Ever. It never will. Sometimes you've got to force yourself to get in. On purpose. <laughs> On purpose. Get in, get out, or get ran over. That's a good motto to live by. I don't want to get ran over, and I don't want to get out. I want to get in. I've been ran over before, and it's not fun. You know what I mean? Get in, get out, or get ran over, guys. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we've got to be carriers of the glory. We are carriers of the glory. We can demonstrate the glory. We can love people. We can bless people. We've got to look for it. And sometimes you've just got to force yourself. There was one time, I remember someone walked up here. It's been about three years ago, four years ago. Someone walked up to me after service, and they gave me a Pentecostal handshake. You know what those are? It's always filled with cash. Show it to you. <laughs> Pentecostal handshake. And I said, glory, thank you. You know, I thanked him, put it in my pocket, walked in the back of my office, got in my office to get my stuff to leave, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, go give that to so-and-so that's still in the sanctuary. I don't know what it was, but that thing was stuck in my pocket, if you know what I mean. I was like, Lord, Really? You know, you know that I asked you for this because I need this, Lord. And what's crazy is you know that you're wrong when God doesn't answer you back. He doesn't really care what you think about that because he's already said what he wants you to do anyways. <laughs> you ever had the Lord just not answer you because he's already said it, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, oh. and I don't know was but man that thing was really I, I had such a death grip on that thing it was like come on I gotta give that away Mike and I just I just couldn't let go of it I'm just being honest and I stood in my office for five minutes Lord 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 sure Lord next Sunday if I have you know, if I have some I'll, I'll, I'll bless it you know, all these, come on, am I the only one that's ever gone through all these little, jumping all these little hoops and all this stuff, you know? Finally, I said, all right, Lord. All right, and you know what? And I'm just sharing this because I'm saying this. Your flesh wants to dominate. But then when you say, all right, Lord, all right. There was something about saying yes to the Lord that the flesh just totally just suffocates yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you say yes to him, yeah. and it's like, ooh, and then you feel the glory, the manifested yeah. presence. You feel the peace. You feel the love. You feel the compassion for whatever that situation is. And I was able to honestly, out of, I stand before the Lord, and I say this before everybody in this place, I was able to honestly, five minutes ago I was feeling like, no! But I was able to walk in and just say, I love you, bro. Bless you, man. And give it with such joy yes. and peace yes. and favor yeah. that it was just, oh. See, that's the kind of stuff that produces the glory of God. There's glory in giving, guys. There is. Well, what's the glory? It's His manifested presence coming into a situation. 
You might feel it. You might not feel it. But it's His goodness. I heard someone ask Brother Hagel one time, well, how come God will, how come sometimes the power of God will knock people down on the floor and they'll, they call it slain in the spirit or, or, you know, all this. Why does that happen? And Brother Hagen simply answered and said, because Jesus just wants to bless them and touch them. Touch them. Amen. So the glory of the Lord, there's a price that you will have to pay to walk in the glory of the Lord. That's not a very popular subject, it's true. but it's true. Amen. The devil will attack. He'll come after you. He doesn't want you to walk in it. He doesn't want your family to walk in it. He'll try to come after your kids. He'll try to come after your spouse. He'll try to come after your family, your life, your friends, whatever, your job. He'll try to come after you if you accept that you want to walk in the glory of the Lord. I don't say that to scare you or to give you a bunch of fear because you don't have nothing to fear because the devil's defeated, but he will come after but then that's where you dig in and you get deeper and deeper in the authority of the believer. You read Ephesians 1 and 2. You get into that kind of stuff and you figure out who you are in Christ so you know how to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. And Dad talked about it earlier. Worship and praise is the key. That's one of the keys that you can get into His presence. You know, believing the Word of God, knowing the Word of the Lord, using, I love what, uh, what song we sung earlier, and Sister Karen was talking about it, that, that there's, there's a song and a sword. Yes. A song and a sword. A song and a sword. I was praying in the Holy Ghost one day, driving down to Fresno to my doctor's appointment in 2008. I was on Avenue 12, just turned off of Granada. And I was driving down that road, and I started praying in the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, my tongue shifted over into me saying, Kendo, 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 Kendo. I said it like probably 40 to 50 times. Kendo, Kendo. And I'm like, Lord, what is that? Because I know once you get stuck on something like that, He wants to tell you something about it. And I'm like, Lord, I, I think that's like a, like a it's either like a, a Japanese word or a Chinese word or something like that, uh, uh, like that. So I remember calling Bonner. I called him and I said, hey, what is this, what is this word? I said, I've heard it before and I know, I think I know what it is, but I'm not sure. And he goes, it's this type of sword fighting. And so the Lord put that together for me that, look, your tongue is a sword. Did you know that when you sing to the Lord, you're dicing and slicing and cutting, and you're cutting weeds out of your way, you're cutting branches out of the way, you're going forward in the Spirit. The Bible says God, and I have proof of that, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. God inhabits. If God inhabits, the devil can't inhabit. Where light is, darkness flees. And that's just the truth. Amen. Amen. See who you are in the glory. Ask the Father, who am I in your glory, Lord? Let me see who I am in your presence. Let me see who I am in your glory. Show me who I really am, Father God. Guys, listen. God loves it when we ask Him questions. He wants us to ask. I had been seeking Him for about a year, pretty much straight, concerning an issue in my life. Lord, why? And I've had some great talks with my dad. He's given me some great advice, some things that he's learned that I put to use in my life that has helped me grow and understand some things. And maybe from some of you, you've shared some things with me. Here just about four weeks ago, I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I just approached the Lord again about this certain situation in my life, and I said, Lord, I'm receiving some help, and I've learned some stuff, but Lord, I know it's not, I haven't broken through all the way yet, Lord, so I'm asking you, Father, to continue to show me what it is and how I need to go about that. Within 20 seconds, I heard the Lord say, old mind habits. Old mind habits. And he began to show me what that meant to me. And I'm talking about fear. I'm talking about anxiety. Talking about that kind of stuff that would try to come on me and this and that. And he started showing me that your mind has been in such a habit of when some kind of situation arises or something comes up that brings back maybe a trauma or a fear or something that happened in your life that every time that comes up, your mind shifts over into those old mind habits and it goes over into that habit. That's what causes the manifestation of fear and anxiety and all that. It just, it floored me. And I've shared this before in here about this. 
it floored me. I got it. I had an understanding of what it is. Now I know what was causing that. Well, why would it take a year for God to say that to me? I have no clue. But I don't care. I have it. And ever since that day, oh, I'm so excited about this, man. I feel like I picked this pulpit up and chuck it. I'm so pumped right now about this, man. I know I won't. I know half of my noon. <laughs> Not this way. I'm so excited because, and I know some of you are experiencing this in your life. You're experiencing breakthrough in your life. God's showing you some things, man. You're able to, some hurdles that you feel like you've been jumping for years, you're finally starting to just not have any of those in some areas. And, and ever since that, the Lord showed me that. Now, why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because, listen, I'm a human just like you are. And God talks to us by His Spirit. He talks to us because He loves us. And He talks to us because He wants to bless us and help us. And, and, keep, and He wants us to continue to walk in the destiny that He has for us. Yes. Amen? Amen? And ever since then, every time that fear or some kind of deal would try to crop up, I know now, by the Word of the Lord... Because I kept pressing him, seeking him. And there were some adjustments I needed to make in my life. See, sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, you've got to work together with him. You've got to work with him. And ever since then, that, there was something that would rise up or something would happen, and I would immediately start to, and I would catch myself, wait a minute, I'm not going back into that old mind habit. That's not Mike Purcell. This is who I am now. And it shuts down immediately. Guys, that's breakthrough for me. Yeah. And if you're in a situation like that right now where you're seeking God about something, continue to ask Him, continue to seek Him, continue to come before His feet and listen to Him about whatever that is that's concerning you, and He will perfect it, the Bible says. Yeah. He'll help you. But if you want to move in the fullness of the glory, I was, I was watching a revival meeting back in 2013 uh, before I became friends with Todd Bentley. I didn't even know who he, I didn't know him or anything like that. I knew of his ministry, but I didn't know him personally or anything like that. I was watching this revival meeting. He was having a revival down in Africa for a good amount of months. There was revival going on down there. And I was watching this meeting, and I was watching people get healed. I mean, right before my eyes, I mean, manifestations of people's eyes opening and all kinds of stuff. I was watching it on TV, and... I'm sitting there in my recliner and I said, Lord, I said, I want, I want, how do I get that kind of manifestation, demonstration in my meetings, Lord, because I want to see people healed. How do I have that, Lord? How do I get that? Now, don't get religious on me. You shouldn't covet somebody else's gift. I'm not coveting nobody's gift. I already knew I was called to a healing ministry anyways at that time. But I, want to, I was wanting to see more manifestation than I was seeing. Good what I'm seeing. Things are happening. I'm, I'm thankful the Lord will use me to love people and bless them and help them. But I asked the Lord, and this is what he said, and this is what he said to me. He responded to me within 10 minutes. He said to me, he said, Romans 12. I told you to turn over there. And this is what he said. Verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yes. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, or you can say mature will of God. Now, I'll tell you, I really believe that the whole time we're on this earth, before we get to heaven, I really believe the whole time that we're on this earth that our minds need to be renewed. I believe that. I, I believe not that we're some bad person and we, we're, you know, we're not saved. That's not what I'm talking about. We're born, if you're born, if you've asked Jesus to come into your life and you've repented of your sins, you're born again. You've given your life to Christ, you're saved. But then there's a process as we're following Christ that our minds need to be renewed because of all the junk 
that we've either allowed ourselves to get in or we've kind of entertained over the years and just kind of fallen into that, you know, maybe like a critical habit or, or so, something like, or whatever, unforgiveness, whatever, you know, because of situations. But see, the Word and the Father, He says, if you'll come for me and just say, here I am, the Lord, here I am, Lord. And if you have to do that every day, do it every day, whatever it takes. But when you come before Him, He begins to renew your mind. He begins to talk to you. He begins to reveal things to you that maybe you didn't even know you allowed in. He begins to talk to you and He starts to renew. Now see, you renew your mind by the Word of the Lord. The blood's been applied. The blood's been shed. Jesus has done it once and for all. Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus went to hell, kicked the devils behind, took the keys of death into hell in the grave for him, and said that you will not have anything. It's over with. Whoever follows me is of me and will be with me, he said. So that's a, that's a done deal. Now where we're at is we allow circumstances and issues to dominate us sometimes and to change us sometimes. This is wild up here this morning because I have, this is, I don't know anything about this kind of stuff. I'm just saying it. I'll be honest. But we allow things to dominate and change us. And the devil sits over in the corner and he wrings his hands and he smiles and he grins and he laughs. <laughs> If I can just get them over into unforgiveness, if I can just get them over into worry, if I can just get them over into thinking about themselves and, and, and judging everybody and don't care about anybody, if, that's, that's, that's how he works. And then he'll see to it that he brings people into your life to pull you that way. Let me tell you something. If you struggle with drugs, get away from people that do drugs. If you struggle with being drunk and wanting to drink, get away from people that drink. If you struggle with gossip, get away from people that gossip. That's the quickest way to get things broke off you. It's the quickest way. I told this young lady about a year ago. She was trying to clean her life up. She was on drugs, all this kind of stuff. And she went, ended up going to a program for six months. And I told this young lady, I had a conversation with her while she was in this program. I said, I'm telling you. If you get out of this program and you go back to who you were hanging around, you're going to be worse and you might even die. And I, just, I had to tell her the truth. Told it in love, but I had to tell her the truth. Oh, I'm not. I'm, I said, you've got to stay away. You cannot even talk to one of those people. Through text, through phone call, through social media, through anything. You've got to cut those people out. If you have to move to another city... If you can, move. But you can't go back to those people. I won't, I won't. I want to do what's right. I want to do what's right. I want to do what's right. Day one she got out, she went right back to him. She's worse than ever now. And I'm having to pray for her. I'm praying for her. But that's how it works. The devil, and I don't know why I'm saying all this this morning, but this is, listen, if you, if you need to get away from something, then you need to cut it off. Whatever it takes. The devil wants to keep you from your mind being renewed. But you've got to present yourself a living sacrifice. And only you know, really, on the inside, if you're doing that or not between you and the Lord. It isn't my job to, to, to think you are or to assume you are or know that you are. It's none of, that's none of my business. It's between you and the Lord if you are presenting yourself a living sacrifice. Guys, we're not perfect, but we are to walk in the holiness of the Lord. We are. We are. The blood is still real. The blood of Christ is still real. Hell is still real. Heaven is still real. The devil's real. His demons are real. People are possessed. This world we live in isn't great all the time. But Jesus sent his son to make it great. And you know what? He sent you to make it great. He sent you to overtake darkness. Every person in here that has Jesus Christ as their Savior, you have so much authority and power in you 
You might not know it yet, but you do. You can have, by faith, whatever you say. If you're tired of the devil messing with your family, don't speak about your family members that are acting goofy. Come against the spirit that's causing them to act goofy. That's where you'll take ground. That's one of the best things you can do, really, to be honest with you. Because honestly, if your family member knew what they were doing, they wouldn't want to do that. It's a demonic spirit that's trying to, trying to destroy them. But you come against them. We're carriers, of, we're carriers of the glory of the Lord. I heard the Lord speak to me a month ago, and he said, Mike Purcell, listen. I said, okay. Seriously. I've never had him call me by my last name like that before. It was really weird because I was walking down the hallway, and all of a sudden I heard Mike Purcell, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> Seriously. I have weird stuff. There's a lot of stuff I don't share. It's just really weird because, you know, people already think I'm weird anyways. But it was just like, what? And um, I heard him say, Madera, California is a habitation of glory. And I instantly ran to the pen and paper and wrote it down. Madera, California is a place known for the habitation of glory. And I said, okay, Lord. I thank you for that. I've heard that before, Lord. I know, there's been words. I agree with that, God. I'm hooked up with that, Lord. I want to be a part of that. And then Dad gets up here and starts talking about that this morning, about the glory. And it was like another piece of that dawned on me when he said that he wants us yes. to demonstrate that glory. Yes. That's when it comes in. We don't sit around <laughs> waiting for the glory to fall. One of these days, it's going to come. It's already here. It's sitting in the chair you're sitting in. Because it's in you. You just got to be brave enough to when the Lord speaks, step out and do it. <laughs> See, here's the deal. Because this has happened to me, man. And it's like, it's like, oh, you know, I've asked the Lord, Lord, use me wherever you want to use me. Better mean it. To do something, and I was like, I mean, immediately just, like, you know, you start thinking, oh, you know, and you start going in your mind, oh, you know, what, what are they going to think about me? They're not going to, they don't want to listen to that. They don't want to, but then you step out and you do it and it's like as easy as pie because the Lord has told you to do it. Yes. Yep. Seems like when I preach, it starts getting close to lunchtime, I always have food mentioned somehow in my <laughs> message. Why is that? <laughs> easy as pie. It's easy as pie. Listen. You're a mature son and daughter of the Lord, if you want to be. If you want to be. Following the Lord is really simple. It really is. It's just a decision you make. Every day. Lord, I love you. I want to follow you. Yep. Yes. What does the devil do when you do that? Mm. Well, you can't do that. Yeah. Look what you did last night. Yeah. Look what you said. Remember you gave that guy the California high sign, high five sign? <laughs> you can't, you know. We've got to learn to, I mean, all ever watched Andy Griffith. How awesome is that show? I found out that that was one of Elvis's favorite shows to watch, by the way. But anyways, I, I love that show. How many of y'all love Barney Fife, man? What an awesome, that guy is the best character ever on TV. Nobody can top that guy. Everything he did was hilarious. Remember when he'd go, nip it, nip it, nip it, nip it, when he'd say that, you know? Remember that? Andy would be making fun of him, and he would nip it, nip it. You know, he would try to get him to be quiet. Well, I started doing that to the devil. I know it makes him mad because I'm laughing the whole time I'm doing it. Nip it, nip it. Just shut up. Doesn't matter what you say. You lose. You've lost. You're a liar. It's kind of like you win that. 
sporting event or whatever it was, when you're growing up, you win something, you beat the other team, and you're walking off the field, and they're mouthing off to you, it doesn't even matter. You just destroyed them, so you just keep walking. It doesn't matter what they say. It's over. You lost. We won. So run your mouth. The devil runs his mouth constantly. You're just that winner that's walking down off the field saying it doesn't matter. You don't even pay attention because you just won. Yes, exactly. And it's a good feeling. <laughs> Glory. The joy of the Lord is our strength. His joy, like Keith Luker taught that night, that was a great teaching. I got revelation from that. His joy over us is what strengthens us. Think about that for a second. The joy the Father has for you, for you, gives you strength because you know that the Father loves you and He's full of joy over you. Amen? Amen. Does anybody in here have, has been diagnosed with diabetes? If you have, just stand up. Anybody in here being diagnosed with diabetes? Okay, anybody else? Because of diabetes. Okay, your name's Shannon. Okay. Okay, um, all right, come on up here. If you, if you want me to pray for you, I'll pray for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you want to be healed, just come on up here. Let me say it that way. Some people don't want to be healed, so I just, you got to say that sometimes. And that's okay. How you doing, Carlos? Let's see you, man. Love you, brother. All right, Good. Well, not good that you're being diagnosed with diabetes, but good you're coming up to get prayer so you can get healed of diabetes. That's a good thing. Okay, so this is what I heard the Lord say, and I didn't know it was going to be this many folks. Um, but the Lord, the Lord knows what's going on. That lady's name is Shannon, you said, Rod? Ron? Yeah. CJ, is there someone online too? No, okay. This is what I heard the Lord say. And now this is, this is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not going to take a long time unless the Lord has me have a word for you or something like that. But I heard the Lord say, lay hands on them and tell diabetes to come out. Yeah. That's all I heard. Yeah. So you're just get in agreement with me. When I lay my hands on you by faith, because yes. 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 this yes. is a doctrine yes. in the word of the Lord, yes. laying on of hands. Yes. It's yes. real. Yes. Yes. Diabetes, come out in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Diabetes, come out of him in Jesus' name. Come out. In Jesus' name, by the authority of the blood of Jesus, come out of him now in Jesus' name. Diabetes, come out of him now. In the name of Jesus, verge just receive right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Blood be whole. Blood be whole. Blood be whole. Diabetes, come out of her now in Jesus' name. And I command the blood of Jesus Christ, the DNA of God, to flow right now in Jesus' name. Maggie's body in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Diabetes, come out of my sister Dolores right now in the name of Jesus. Blood be whole. Blood be whole. Blood be normal. Normal levels. I command normal levels on everybody's blood in this place right now standing up here in Jesus' name. Miraculous healing power of Jesus. I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, come out of my brother now in the name of Jesus. By the authority and the blood that's been given to me in Jesus' name, come out of him now in Jesus' name. And everything else is trying to, loose, or trying to hold him, come out of him in Jesus' name. I command freedom in your blood. I command freedom in your body. I command freedom in your mind. I command freedom in your bones. I command freedom in your family. From this day forward now, thank you angels for working in my brother's family right now. Angels go, angels go, minister go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Diabetes, come out of Diane now. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I received that, Lord. Thank I know you do. Just take it. In Jesus' name. I command total healing in her blood right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I say in Jesus' name that blood reports next time they go to the doctor will be normal and be rising and becoming whole. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for Shannon right now. She's in the hospital because of this issue of diabetes. I command diabetes to come out of Shannon right now in Jesus' name. 
Healing angels, go forth and minister to her in the hospital right now. I thank you that the healing glory, the, the, the glory of the Lord begins to invade her room right now. And I thank you for the fire of God just to in, in, engulf her hospital room right now with a healing anointing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Clarence, come here for a second. Just stand up. Now, I've shifted over into ministry and into the prophetic, so just allow me to do that. Just stay hooked in, okay? Let the Lord do what He wants to do for people in here in this place. And just sit there and receive where you're at right now from the Lord. Look to the Lord today. Get your eyes off me. If anybody else, look to the Lord right now. See what He has to say to you right now. The Lord said this to me earlier about you, Clarence. He's chosen you. He's pulled you out. You're not below. You're not in the middle, but you're up on top. He's brung you on top. He's sticking you out there. You're going to be, you're going to be seen. God's going to, uh, people are going to see God in you. God's going to use you. You're not in the back corner. You're not in the back, but He's pulled you up to the front. So let that light shine. Be what God has called you to be. Let Him use you. Let Him listen to you. He's given you power. He's given you authority. You're a word man. You know the Word and you know the Spirit. So it's time for you, says the Spirit of the Lord, to step out and to be what I've called you to be. Be a minister of love, a minister of giving, a minister of, 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 of healing. Let me use you for my glory, says the Lord. But you're not in the corner, you're not in the middle, but you're in the front, in the kingdom. So step out and know your authority and obey the Lord and let Him use you. Because this is the day where He's out and things are going to escalate by the Holy Spirit in you in Jesus name Oof. whoa whoa <laughs> glory to God that's a good word man Andrew can you come up here for a second praise the Lord hallelujah is he in here yeah he's in here come on over here thank you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, where are you at? Thank you, Lord. Okay, so this is what the Lord said. He said that um, where you're at right now is fine. You're doing good. Things are going good. You just got married. Things are happening. God's talking to you. You're developing that relationship <clears throat> with Him. But He's going to use you for some mighty things. He's going to use you and your wife for some mighty things. And uh, uh, I asked the Lord if I should call Angelica, but he said, no, just wanted me to call Andrew up. So, so d this goes for you too, Angelica, but I just got to obey the Lord, okay? There's a reason for this. You are a couple. He's going to use you guys, but, but here's the thing. You're, 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 you're going to be, you're going to grow really fast. Okay, but the Lord is, the Lord is telling you to just keep that relationship in the forefront, right in front of you with him. And sometimes your head will spin like, wow, Lord, I don't think I can do all that that you're asking me. But he, he, there'll be a right timing for it. And plus, you know, you got a good heart. You've, you've submitted to us as your leaders and things like that. You look to us so we're able to help you, and that's a good thing. You're not a lone ranger, and that's a good thing. But God's going to escalate some things really quickly in your life. So you just listen to Him. And this is what He said too. He said, lay hands on Him. Because I want to cover him with the cloud. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're going to find days, because this is, I didn't know what I saw earlier, but now I'm starting to, now, now, now I understand it. The Lord just showed that to me. I saw you laying down in here, actually. I saw you laying down in here under the cloud. And I, asked, I said, why is he laying down? He said, because I want him just to cover him with the cloud. I want to let him lay in the cloud. That's what he said to me. And I said, okay, cool. But then the Lord just spoke to me right now, and he said that there's going to be days. I don't know if it's full days, 24 hours, or if it's just times during the day. I don't know where you're going to find yourself just laying down in that cloud. The cloud's going to be visible. And God's going to be, you're not going to be ministering to God. He's going to be ministering to you in those times. God, I want that. <laughs> oh, it's going to be pure joy. Ah! Man. 
pure joy. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for pouring into him everything he needs. Your family's going to see such a manifestation of favor and blessing. They're going to fall on their knees and give their life to Jesus. Because it's going to be something they've never seen, experienced, and they're going to know it's supernatural from the Father. And nothing that you've done but what the Father's done. That's your life. People are going to see it. Favor. Favor, 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 favor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Shaka ba 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 saka. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now. Glory to God, there's just a holy moment. Thank you, Lord. Now I have this to say about I have this to say about Tuesday morning prayer meetings. Huh. I have this to say about our Tuesday morning prayer meetings. People that have been coming. There's several people in this place that have either attended once or twice or come quite a bit, or all the time, or so-so. If you've been a part of that, I, I want you to listen to this. Now, just because you haven't come because you work and things like that, that's, that has nothing, that, that's okay. But it, we're all one here, we're a unit here. But the Lord said about Tuesday morning prayer meetings that there's been a birthing. That there's been a birthing during these last four years that we've had this. And that that birthing that we've, that, that those of you that are, that come to that, and we've been, we've been, at first it was like pushing, 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 pushing. But the last year or so, there's been just such a, a joy and a flow in, in here, those meetings on Tuesday morning that is just incredible. But there's been a birthing out of those Tuesday morning corporate prayer meetings. And the birthing that has taken place has opened the doors in Madera, California, and this region, the San Joaquin Valley, that the heavens have been opened and angels have been descending and descending. They've been doing the work of the Lord. They've been taking people out of positions that are evil and putting people in positions that are going to flow with the God, the God story is what I heard. That's a weird way to put it, but I understand that. Now, I know we're not the only ones that pray. There's other folks that are praying, and we're all in this together. But the Lord is having me say this to the ones that come on Tuesday mornings to encourage you, but also the ones that are hooked up in this ministry to encourage you that there's been a birth that has been given and the heavens are open and the angels are ascending and descending and there's God is working in the secular realm to remove people that are trying to hinder the movement of God and putting people in that are going to allow the movement of God whether they're believers or not And that's, that's why, Lord, that's why. That's been a big part of our Tuesday morning prayer meetings. That's, why, that's what's been happening in the Spirit when we pray. Thank you, Lord. In Psalms 33, the Bible talks about God will come to the nations that fear Him. And Lord, you've got a remnant of people that fear you, that reverence you, and that's us. So Lord, I thank you that you're moving in Madera, California, 
You're moving through us in Madera, California. You're moving in this San Joaquin Valley, Lord, that's so dear to us. It's where we live. It's the people that we love. I felt so out of place when I was on the road. When I got back here, I felt I was in place again. Because this is, the, this is where God's called me. This is the place I love. This is the people that I love. So, Father, I thank you for raising up ministries in this building today, Lord. Those things you've been talking to your people about all these years, this time, Lord, that nudging, that prompting that's been going on the inside of them, Lord, I thank you, Father God, that the day's coming where they'll operate in the fullness of it, Lord. You know, I just feel like there's people in here right now where you're sitting, you need to come before the Lord right now. You need to come before the Lord right now. Because you've been making decisions out of your flesh and out of your head. And you know they're not right. You need to just come before Him right now. And you need to lay that at His feet, repent for that, and say, here I am, God, and just... And just, just make a declaration between you and the Lord that you're done with playing games, you're done with going around that mountain, you're done with all that. You want to stay hooked in with the Father. I don't believe it goes for everybody in here, but there's some folks in here that that's just really impressing upon me. Quit wasting time. That isn't easy to say from up here, but it's just the truth. The Holy Spirit says quit wasting time, some of you. It's been a long enough. Stick your stake in the ground and say, yes, I'll follow you with all my heart. And while I follow you, you'll work and renew and help me through things that I need help in. Yeah. Don't let the devil deceive you thinking that you can do it because you can't. It's got to be him. So, Father, whoever that is in this place, if it's one, if it's ten, if it's twenty, it doesn't matter. Whoever it is, I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, right now for your peace to be released upon their minds, their hearts, their lives. I thank you that they are sons and daughters of the most living, high living God. And I thank you for the plan, the purpose that you have for them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that doors will be open for them, Father, to do the work that you've called them to do on this earth, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, I'm, I'm, thank, I'm asking you that there'll be more glory manifestations come out of us into others, Lord. Thank you that we're salt and light in this earth, penetrating the secular society, God. You've called us to do that in love. Thank you that we can do the work of the evangelist. That we can evangelize, Father, through the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Let us not be about us, but about your work, your business. That's my heart, Lord. That's our heart today. Our hearts are softened before you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that people were healed in this place of diabetes today, Lord. They will see the results of healing, Lord. It will be a miracle. It will be a healing. And they'll use that testimony to bring others out of darkness and into the light. Others out of sickness and into the divine health of the Father. Use us for your glory, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're welcomed in this place, Holy Spirit. You're welcomed in our hearts, Holy Spirit. You're welcomed in our lives, Holy Spirit. 
You're welcomed in our city, Holy Spirit. You're welcomed in our nation, Holy Spirit. You're welcomed in this valley, Father. Let this valley be known for the glory of the Lord. You're welcomed in our schools, Heavenly Father. We thank you that there's angels ascending and descending in our schools this year, Lord. Revival fires will hit schools, God. A sovereign move of the Spirit of the Lord will come in to our schools, Lord. I pray for every educator in this building, everybody that works at the schools, that deals with the schools, that maybe even coaches or is a teacher's aide or, or cleans the schools or whatever, everybody that's involved in that, Lord, I pray over them right now in Jesus' name. And I say that this year will be a year like they've never had before with the favor of God, the glory of God, able to speak to staff members, able to speak to kids, able to release healing, able to prophesy and declare and decree and things will change in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus if you agree with that it's a done deal Amen. Amen. there's more than two of us in this place <laughs> Jesus name ha <laughs> glory thank you Lord Dad, you got something? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Michael mentioned the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the 10, 10 o'clock prayer meeting on Tuesday. Wednesday night, we have a prayer meeting every week as well at 7. And we come in here, and we've got, in the back back there, we've got seven posters that Linda made up for us of the seven mountains or the seven spheres of society that affect our life every day. <clears throat> we, pl we scatter them in a circle around the building in here to remind us of the fact that we're praying for our society you, to be changed. Thank you, Jesus. And this last Wednesday, we've been doing that for quite a while. This last Wednesday, Pat Upton uh, lifted his hand and he spoke out and he took, God gave him a revelation and an understanding of things that had already changed in every one of those spheres of society. Yes. And he, he spoke that out and shared that. And I, it was such an uh, encouragement. I don't know, where are you at, Pat? Oh, there you are. I don't know if you remember all those right now or not. I asked him to write them down for me. I hope he can remember them to write them down. But uh, we'll share that. But listen, we're making progress. God's making progress. The Holy Spirit wants us to just move forward with him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, uh, I'm going to be sharing tonight, and I believe, I've, I believe this last week, God gave me already part two of what he shared today. So if you can be here tonight, I encourage wow. you to be here. If not... Make sure you watch on YouTube, our YouTube channel, what is shared, because this is really, right now, God is really looking for people to step into a place where he can right. take them to yeah, places they've time. never been it's before. It's definitely time. And so it's very important. It's definitely Amen. time. Yeah. Well, let's stand. Well, this, let me say this. Yeah, stand up, but this, this church, the, the prophetic is is going to increase majorly. I mean, it's a thing where uh, if you're if you're hooked in here, you hooked it. Yeah. I like that, man. Look at Holy Ghost tug of war. <laughs> I'll just let him be. That's good. Hallelujah. Yep. Listen, I want, you to, I want you to expect the prophetic in your life yeah. to, to prophesy yeah. or to even just say something to somebody that just it slams them right between the eyeballs of the love of God. Because the prophetic's very strong in this place and it's going to get more and more and more and more and more to where almost every time someone gets up to minister, it's going to be all prophetic the whole time. Yeah. That's where it's headed. That's what happens with me almost every time I get up now. Yeah. It's prophetic. Amen? So receive that and be that, too. You can have that. Amen. Anybody been to a water park? Oh, yes. You know that big, huge bucket? <laughs> yeah, that tips over. It fills over. up and fills up and fills up. Yes. And so many people stand on the outside so they don't get wet. Yeah. 
Ah. And the thing that I saw when he's talking about the glory hmm. is we have a tendency to stay on the outside instead of stepping over and letting that just drown you. And that's what I saw, and I just wanted to share that quickly. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it's present or future, but when you see that bucket, sometimes the bell rings, sometimes you don't even know. I've seen that before, but yeah. watch it yep. and step into it when it happens. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen, Harold. That's true. Get under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. <laughs> I think that's what happened to Clarence today. Hell yeah. And a few others. I um, want to pray on our way out the door here. Uh, a friend of ours, Rick Milliken, pa a minister, he passed on to go home to be with the Lord this last week. So I want to pray for his wife, Debbie, and their family as they go through this transition. And also a friend of ours named Jerry has been uh, put on dialysis, and they ask for prayer. And then a, a friend of ours also named Sherry who's been having some physical problems. And right now, ask the Lord to give you somebody to pray for. Ask him to show you someone right now, and let's lift them up. Praise God. Lord, you're not limited to this building. You're not limited to this congregation. Father, you are able, and I've seen you do it many, many, many times, to touch lives. We, we spoke these names. There are others, Lord, that you're showing to your people. So we come into agreement right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that the glory of the Lord, the healing virtue of God, begins to flow. The wisdom of God begins to flow. Favor, give doctors information they need, if need be. But, Lord, we stand for the healing and the restoration of these that we pray for right now. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness and for your glory and all that you're doing in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Have a good afternoon. We'll be back tonight at 6. Come and be with us if you can. Don't ask your body if it should be here. Ask the Lord. <laughs>